on the Bewley and Hamble rivers. The yacht Lindy II sailing the Solent and leading a flotilla of special vessels to a rendezvous on the south coast. Special because Lindy and her kind had this in common. They were all hand-built from traditional materials to the plans of one man. Frequently, these craft are affectionately referred to as HBs because they were the creation of the late Dr. T. Harrison Butler, one of yachting's most respected designers, and their owners share a delighted pride in his remarkable skills. So when the sailing season draws to a close, they meet up to share the experiences of the past season and to celebrate the man who brought their lovely craft into being. And this particular autumn, it's the River Hamble and a venue which most people associate with the chrome and plastic of Howard's Way. HB designs vary in size and displacement. Peter Richardson's Ascadil, 30 feet, built in 1934, a safe family cruiser, a veteran of transatlantic voyaging with a young family. Now Ascadil is snug in her home berth at Bursledon on the River Hamble. A smaller HB design, the little four-tonner, Mary Niven. The designs of Harrison Butler have been built all over the world, and with them has grown a pride of ownership. Over the years, HB sailors have formed an association, a kind of extended family, under the motherly care of the late doctor's daughter, Joan Jardine Brown. Yeah. The Harrison Butler Association was formed because various owners of his boats felt so very strongly that there was something very special about them, which they was. It pleased me tremendously because my father had died about 30 years before, and it was marvelous to think that people were still so keen on his boats and uh, that they wanted to do something about it. How many people do you think there? Um, well, it was it was 43 originally, mm. and then um, Peter May, the can't come because Ruth is very ill. We have two functions a year at which we meet people, and usually they're very well attended. The association has meant that I have rekindled friendships with people whom I knew before the Second World War. I've met so many new friends too. You talk about not only boat things, but uh, what's been happening to them. It's good to see the boats again, because they're, most of them I knew when I was a child. It's lovely to see them years, years later, still being loved and cared for. It's jolly nice to see you all here, and particularly pleased to see our members who haven't been here before. So, at this autumn meeting, these sailing enthusiasts are gathered because of the genius of this man. Dr. T. Harrison Butler was born in 1871, the son of a parson and one of a family of four. His early education was at Dorchester Grammar School, and then he won a place to St. Paul's School in London. He was a good student in both the sciences and the classics. At an early age, he read a paper on marine engines. He matriculated a hundred years ago and went on to Oxford to read medicine. But in spare moments there, he became interested in the scientific approach to the design of yachts. As a relaxation from his medicine, he went to the Bodleian Library and read papers on displacement and buoyancy and did complex calculations into how vessels should be ballasted. It was when he was up at Oxford that my father started designing, and it was a hobby which went on throughout his life. And he was a great admirer of Albert Strange's work. And there's a certain similarity in their designs. You will find that all the curves are true curves. There are no flat bits anywhere where there should be curves. And uh, I always feel that my father went on where Albert Strange left off. 
Harrison Butler followed the tradition of Albert Strange in designing good seaworthy vessels for the cruising yachtsman, and his legacy is unique. Ron Goodhand owns Lindy too, built in 1936 by Moody's at Swanwick Shore. And to him and his son Paul, it's a special joy to own a traditional vessel in an era when yachts are more often the creation of the industrial chemist than of the shipwright building to the plans of a caring designer. I think the pride of ownership of a one-off unique vessel which was built to order, specifically designed to a man's own requirements. And it is like owning a vintage car. It just stands out so much from the rest. It's safe, secure, seaworthy, and just a nice thing to own. When Harrison Butler designed, I found a very safe, easy to sail, sympathetic type of yacht. Um, with three small children, I found her extremely easy to sail. I find that the children enjoy working on board, working the boats, taking the helm. They even get involved with making sail, taking in sail. I just feel it gives me a, a great sense of security to have a yacht that is um, so, so basically stable and yet is an extremely classic design. Once seen, never forgotten. That's how Peter Richardson thinks of his Ascadil. His introduction to Harrison Butler ownership was love at first sight. It was during a cruise with my father and uh, his boat in Southern Ireland. I saw Askadil sailing there, and my feelings were suddenly, if I ever wanted a boat, that is the type of boat that I wanted. And it was rather interesting finding all about, you know, finding out about Harrison, Dr. Harrison Butler. There have been instances where we have said, uh, my wife and I have said to her that uh, I think uh, he's got it right, um, you know, in fairly lumpy conditions. and. Uh, very, very nice sail. Uh, it was six years later uh, when she came briefly on the market that uh, I jumped at the chance of uh, owning her, um, taking a very speedy trip to Ireland uh, to have a look again after six years to make sure that I hadn't made a mistake. And I discovered, no, I hadn't made a mistake. She was a very nice looking boat. We had a very interesting cruise on the eastern coast of America, almost taking a year. We left the boat in Florida while well, my wife and I had a new arrival, uh, daughter arrived, and we sailed back from Florida um, with Emma. We, it was a marvellous sail from Florida to Bermuda, Bermuda to the Azores, and then homeward from there. The boat really looked after us, and we've made many friends through Ascadil, um, being a wonderful calling card, if you like. Dr. Harrison Butler himself was very much a family man and naturally concerned that the craft he designed should be safe and seaworthy. He didn't like weather helm because that wears out a crew. So throughout his life, he was modifying his designs in order to try to eliminate weather helm and produce a better balanced hull. After he died in 1945, his book was published in which he analyzed his designs and compared their performance. The dotted outline indicates the later hull shape, which produced a better balanced vessel with greatly enhanced sailing characteristics. To achieve this, Harrison Butler had to master the technique of metacentric analysis, which involved, of all things, balancing cut-out scaled paper sections of the underwater hull shapes on the blade of a cutthroat razor. He was most definitely not a professional designer. He designed for fun. He charged the fee for the duplication, and that was all. And he did invite people, if they wished, to con contribute to whatever charity he was collecting for at the time. It might be the church organ or the church roof or an instrument for his hospital. This is the yacht Matt Alley, named after a Malayan pirate who was arrested, tried and executed by the British years ago. The pirate's son was one of the people who built this vessel for a rubber planter in Malaya in 1935. And she's made of chengal, a wood even denser than teak. She conforms to the time-honoured conventions of Harrison Butler design, that a vessel should be strong, should be seaworthy and sea kindly, as well as being beautiful. Harrison Butler would never distort the lines. 
on a small boat, for instance, he would never have a doghouse for the sake of improving headroom. He felt this would affect the sailing characteristics as well as reducing the aesthetic appeal of the vessel. The attractions of Harrison Butler designs soon spread all over the world. It is difficult these days to believe that the craftsmen who built the Mat Alley did so only with hand tools. For a time, Mat Alley cruised Malayan waters before being shipped to Port Said and sailed to England through the Mediterranean and the Canal Midi through France. Mat Alley is 31 feet overall, a water line of 28 feet and draft five and a half feet. Her home port now is Bristol and our owner, Mike Wrightson. In the forecastle, we have full standing headroom, which is unusual in a vessel of this size. It's caused by, or created by, the design and the shear of the deck and the line of the coach roof itself. Of course, as we come further back, we cannot achieve full standing headroom in the vicinity of the mast because of the need for strength. But further back in the main cabin, again, we have full standing headroom. When I was looking to buy a boat, one of the things that impressed me about this design and the boat itself was the way the frames are solid, a Samson post, the strength that's there, and one has confidence in a boat that is built so solidly. Where the mast comes through the deck, there's a need for great strength. Harrison Butler, in his design, has devised these diagonal braces which run in the four directions from the mast, taking the load out through the deck to the sides of the boat, thereby spreading these loads evenly through the vessel. Her design shows careful attention to detail. The drainway below the portholes doubles as a handhold. Storage space was always an important consideration in a Harrison Butler design, with drawers the width of the cabin. The tall, narrow stowage for the anchor chain prevents the stowed cable from shifting in a seaway. In this vintage design, a pressure paraffin heating system was installed. And under the bunks, spacious lockers with woven cane lids. The galley and chart space was always well catered for. But for some reason, Harrison Butler was never in favor of wasting space with elaborate toilet facilities. People within three or four minutes of docking in any dock will come and ask, is that a Harrison Butler? Or that's an old boat, how old is it? You know, where was it built? They want to know the details. Uh, and, of course, this particular boat is, having been built in Malaya, very quickly gets a very interesting conversation going because people uh, have that much more interest. In the 1970s, with the revival of attention to classic boats, the growing interest in HB designs led owners to write to the yachting press. They suggested the possible setting up of a Harrison Butler Association but how best to go about it. In Harrison Butler's lifetime, 150 vessels had been built to over 30 of his designs, and the searching out of them from the thousands of registered yachts was the starting point for Peter Rosser and Ron Goodhand. Ron Goodhand wrote to people whose names were in Lloyd's Register, who had boats designed by my father, and we gradually collected quite a number, and we had our first general meeting towards the end of January in 1975. My father had died about 30 years before, and it was marvelous to me to think that people were still so keen on his boats that they wanted to gather together and have a form an association. And as a matter of fact, I had on several occasions thought that it would be a nice thing and had even mentioned it to my father that uh, it would be nice to have a get-together and a collection of his boats. Now, since the foundation of the association, many such happy meetings have been arranged, with vessels sailing from the East Coast and the West Country 
to meet here in Solent for the summer get-together. The little Diana, a gaff-rigged four-tonner from Chichester. Diana is the oldest of today's flotilla, built in 1928 of mahogany on oak. The six-tonner Crunag, built at Dickie's Yard at Tarbert on Loch Fyne in 1931, a substantial vessel of teak on oak. Here, the little gaff-rigged Mary Niven, a four-tonner built in 1939 to Harrison Butler's Zeitlin design. And on this occasion, the chance for Joan, the doctor's daughter, to sail in Lindy 2, followed by Matt Alley. Minion was built in 1931 to Harrison Butler's Cyclone II design. Pitch pine on grown oak frames with a two and a quarter ton iron keel. The destination for the 1987 summer meeting was Butler's Hard on the Bewley River. Now the association has 170 members, including 72 owners of genuine Harrison Butler designs, a get-together of people with a common interest in traditional vessels. <laughs> you see, you get, you get your boat too heavy if you put too much in, because she's overplanked. She Ian Howlett, designer of White Crusader, Britain's challenger for the America's Cup, himself a Harrison Butler owner. In this age of factory-produced vessels, a little flotilla of traditional craft are birthed on an historic river. And just by being there, they pay tribute to a man who used an intuitive skill to think seriously and pleasurably about sail and the sea, and who nicely stayed true to the simple beauty of the classic boat while always essentially remaining a family man. We were always very close and very much in tune with each other and corresponded quite often. And on this occasion, I was writing about a week after my parents had returned home to find out how he was because he hadn't been well. And I wrote one sentence and then there was a complete blank. There was nothing more to say. And a little later, the telephone rang, and my mother re said that he had died 20 minutes before. And it must have been just at the time that I was writing. And that explained why there was, was nothing more to say.